everybody. I'm Ahmad Rashad, and this is Real TV. Today, trouble's coming from everywhere. So I was like, this is going to suck. A skydiver tries a move that rockets him to Earth at over 50 miles an hour. It's my crowning moment. Yeah, he ought to be proud of this. Protesters will do anything to stop these cars, including lying down in front of them. Plus, a jet skier gets flattened, and the rock show that hits a very sour note. We'll always deliver the shots you want to see. We're Real TV with Ahmad Rashad. Welcome to the show. The teenagers in our first story are just trying to kill a little time with a silly stunt. But for one of them, the stunt turns out to be no laughing matter. Whatever happens, it's not my fault. Who are you kidding? You and your friends are so guilty of the evil error that's about to unfold. Today, Gabe Fauber is the group guinea pig. He tucks himself inside a shopping cart. And away he goes down a blind hill. Hey! Holy <laughs> The collision is killer to watch. Gabe says stop, but the car says uh-uh. In an instant, Gabe is going downtown. <laughs> it's a wild water ride off the coast of Jacksonville, Florida. On this day, it's the Jet Ski Nationals. French champ Nicholas Ruiz and American Dustin Farthing battle it out for the top spot. <laughs> Windy weather makes the waves extra choppy. Dustin almost wipes out, but he hangs on and revs hard. It's the final stretch. Dustin takes the lead, but Nicholas won't give up first place without a fight. Take another look. Nicholas's jet ski nails Dustin in the head. Incredibly, Dustin's not seriously hurt. He goes on to race later that day and wins. A world of hurt is just around the corner, right here on Real TV. California boy Jamie Guajardo has over 200 skydives under his belt. This dude's a pro. About to make a skydive, what up? Today, he and his buddies are hanging in Hawaii and getting ready to make another jump. His friends head out first. Jamie's all good to go. The skydive itself was awesome. I had a pretty fast skydive in general. <laughs> At the last couple of hundred feet, Jamie decides to bust a new move. I did what's called a hook turn, or basically a swooping type thing. And at a couple hundred jumps, you really have no business attempting a maneuver like that. Holy <laughs> Stay still, dude. Stay still. Oh, holy no, dude. Don't, don't. Just stay still. Stay still. Relax, relax. Jamie smacks the ground at over 50 miles an hour. He's in big trouble. I got you, oh, my gotcha. God. Just right back Don't, Don't move. Don't touch him. Okay, okay my left leg's it. broke. Lucky for Jamie, there's a doctor on the scene. Okay, relax. 911. 911. <laughs> right in that last split second, I was like, this is going to suck. I was just in shock. Didn't yell, didn't scream, didn't cry. I was just like, my legs are broke. My legs are broke. Jamie wishes it was only that bad. Stay still. Left femur break. Uh, I got a titanium steel rod running from my hip to my knee. Two pins in the knee, pin in the hip. Despite a year-long recovery, Jamie can't wait to get back in the air. And he even laughs about it with friends. Every time I watch it, I joke with my friends. I'm like, let's see how fat my skydive was, dude. I had a great skydive. And uh, they laugh at me, you know. You say, well, yeah, but your landing was crap. And I attempted something that I probably shouldn't have. But, you know, I learned from it. So I'm ready to go back. You know the old adage about getting back on a horse. Well, skydiving, that's a horse of a different color. Tell a friend you're watching Real TV. Sir, you're blocking we have access to a private building, sir. Abortion protesters take it to the streets outside a clinic. But at least stop them from blocking the driveway. Move out of the way. Get out of the way. What a man! Such brave people! What a man! Cops try.
try to keep the two sides apart. But the protesters won't budge. Come on, moving fast. Minutes later, a driver trying to enter the clinic goes too far. One of the protesters lies motionless. Go back up! Go back up! But after an ambulance worker looks her over, she walks away. The driver says he didn't mean to run over anybody. He isn't charged, and none of the protesters are seriously hurt. But the battle leaves its marks. You got a tape? We want to see it. Call us at 1-888-REAL-TV-1. Many musicians and a lot of my friends who sing have had to face their fair share of hecklers. But when the crowd in our next tape gets rowdy, the band fights back. When hardcore punk band Phobia exports its music to Japan, something gets lost in the translation. The band squares off against hecklers. After a few rounds of bar boxing, the guys are ready to continue their set. But one guy isn't done fighting yet. Now he's done. When the heckler tries to jump up on stage, bass player Bruce Reeves gives him a four-string facial. I took my bass, you know, it was plugged in at the time. And so when when I hit him, you could hear it. It was like the bass in the face is the band's finale. The show is over. The guys are a little banged up. I got a swollen pinky and a swollen knuckle. My feelings hurt. But then again, punk rock is supposed to hurt. Coming up, they're preparing for a battle of a different kind. Rounding up one riled up lioness. Plus, the car that lights up the night in more ways than one. And tomorrow, a backyard wrestler pushes it too far and really gets burned. Plus, here's why you should look both ways before you cross the street. This is the home of the world's best. Caught on tape. Nobody, nowhere, does it as good as Real TV. Welcome back. As our next set of tapes show, whether on two wheels, four wheels, or no wheels, when you crash, it hurts. It's a major motorcycle race in Australia. Solo racers fly at speeds up to 75 miles an hour. Pretty fast for a bike that has no brakes. But sometimes it can get real ugly. Watch again. Five racers take the first turn. One rider clips the bike next to him, sending two others barreling into the wall. Both men out like lights. Medics race to help. But don't worry. They make a full recovery with only a few bruised ribs. More trouble. In Minnesota, hang gliding is thrilling enough, but these guys take danger to new heights. They're going for a float on a boat over Medicine Lake. Watch again. The pilot tries to buzz the water, but ends up taking a nasty nosedive. Both men release their harnesses before impact and swim away scratch-free. In Ohio, engines roar as home video captures the last car in a wheelie contest. He's going to flip over and break his light bulb. Be careful what you wish for. You just may get it. again from the second home video end. The Chevy Nova clips an edge and sparks fly. The car rides the wall until it flips on its side. An ambulance picks the driver up, only to give him a lift back to let real TV know he's just fine. Ladies and gentlemen, Continuous, non
non-stop video back-to-back. -back. You're watching Real TV. <laughs> It looks like a war movie. But the danger couldn't be more real. In Chile, a 500-pound lioness has checked herself out of a zoo. Soldiers transform the neighborhood into a battlefield, just a few feet from where kids play. A shaking hand prepares a tranquilizer dart. The animal takes a shot to the back. And a couple of minutes later, she's in dreamland. Tomorrow, the queen of the jungle will wake up back in her cage, but out of harm's way. The big colors this season are black and blue. We're introducing the new collection next here on Real TV. This handrail is looking mighty sweet. And skater Roxy Leonidas wants a piece of it. He goes for a board slide once. Twice. Three times and bye bye You all right? The crash is ugly, but Roxy's attitude is even worse. That's what you get for being a You ain't never gonna mind. This kid is about to open a can of whoop ass. Look, I'm telling you now, I'm gonna come back to this rail and I'm gonna burn it. I swear it to you, guys. Roxy is raging. His face is shredded. Ouch. Ouch. I got up and my friend was telling me I had like a busted lip open. And I was, you know, I was like, what? Roxy isn't a big fan of blood. Losing face in front of his friends killed him. But he did learn from the experience. Don't try to be a big shot in front of your friends. If you can't handle it, don't do the real. Straight ahead. A man makes a mad dash for the border, and only a police chopper can keep up. Speed is about 98 to 100, and there is no police car anywhere in sight. Plus, an entire town is taken hostage. Troops move in to set the villagers free. Stick around. There's more great tape coming up in a flash. Have you checked out the Real TV website lately? Streaming video, great archives, and lots more at www.realtv1.com. Welcome back. Many times when you watch a police chase, the suspect ends up driving around in circles. But you're about to see one man who definitely knows where he's going. He's coming up to uh, Ora Vista to Coyote and the intersection. The car is stolen. The driver is running. And the chase is on. The wrong side of the road. These speeds, it's not long before things get dangerous. Look again in slow motion as the runaway sideswipes a truck. You can see some side panels fly off the car. A San Diego police air support helicopter is hot on the fugitive's tail. And this guy is flying. The speed is about 90 to 100. And there is no police car anywhere inside behind this guy. He's just doing it on his own. The bad guys headed straight for the Mexican border. He's gonna run. He run, Kevin. I'm gonna put this thing down. The driver winds his way through local traffic. Then gets back on the freeway and puts the pedal to the metal. This guy's outrunning me. Just to let you know, this guy is, uh, he's outrunning us. We can cut corners, but he is, uh, well in excess of 100. The chase goes back onto local streets as the fugitive gets closer and closer to the border. Holy shit, I almost hit that construction guy. Okay, Abel, he's right down by the new sewage treatment plant uh, on the dirt road right now. He's going to run across the fence here. Okay, he's going to Mexico. Hang on, I'm going to try to ID the guy. Hispanic male, white t-shirt, black pants, white tennis shoes. The wire, I got him. Okay, Abel, he is in Mexico. Cops on the U.S. side find over three pounds of cocaine in the car. Meanwhile, on the Mexican side, the chopper hovers while the man runs into a building. But Mexico's no safe haven for this bad guy. He's arrested by local police and sentenced to 10 years for drug possession. 
A certified 100% real TV hero happens to be just around the corner. In California's Mojave Desert, an 11-year-old boy falls into a rocky crevice. He's slowly getting crushed to death. I'm trying to hurt. It's gonna hurt. Firefighters try and pull the boy up with ropes, but his body won't budge. Desert temps rise to a dangerous 100 degrees. The boy's dehydrated and losing strength. Then firefighters get an idea. They decide to drench the boy with cooking oil. It works! He's a little bruised and thirsty, but he's just fine. Gonna go climb it again? No! Record, playback, watch. The three-step program to Real TV. Sheer terror has come to a quiet Colombian village. <laughs> Police believe these rebels massacred two dozen people in a nearby town. Now, the terrorists set up a massive 300-vehicle roadblock and take the occupants of this entire village hostage. One brave newsman keeps his camera rolling. They shoot out tires. The villagers fear the rebels may turn their guns on them next. Villagers run for their lives. In a nearby home, fearful men, women, and children huddle together. <laughs> Government troops have come to rescue the villagers. Now, they're in a wild shootout with the rebels. And the innocent hostages are caught right in the crossfire. In all the confusion, it's tough to tell the good guys from the bad. For 90 minutes, this tranquil neighborhood becomes a deadly war zone. When the shooting finally stops, a miracle is revealed. The rebels have fled, and not one single person in this village is injured. Firefighters battle on nine alarm blaze when a granite wall collapses, trapping 18 underneath. Plus, taking to the skies in the world's smallest jet. Closed captioning provided by... When we show you a family pet in trouble, it's usually a cat or a dog. But this time, it's a fish. In Washington State, a fish named Judy is in a fix. She sucked up a mouthful of rock from the aquarium floor, and it's wedged in tight. That means this delicate goldfish can breathe, but she can't eat. And after two days, her owner is worried. Okay, can you bring the net for me? A quick transfer to a smaller bowl, and Susil Senavaratna and his daughter get ready for a little fish first aid. But first, he's got to catch Judy. He's scared, but yeah, I, I, I can't eat slippery, you know? Susio gets his hands on the slippery fish and goes to work on that rock with a pair of very sharp nail scissors. It's a surgery I'm doing to this guy. This is the stone that came out of the fish's mouth. Amazing. After a few minutes recovery, Judy the goldfish is just fine. But we just have to show you this fish story one more time. We are all out of time for today, but as we go, check out these snowboarders putting a new spin on their sport without the snow. So long, everybody.